Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I am back with some Battleetics action for our, our exciting Wave 2 miniatures here. So tonight I wanted to uh, take a look at one that, uh, that I really had no idea about. Um, so I looked at the weirdest mech that I could possibly find, which was the Battle Cobra, obviously. Uh, and I don't know much about the Battle Cobra, admittedly. Um, except for every time I hear the name I think of the, the bad guy from G.I. Joe. Side note, uh, but <laughs> anyway, I, I like you know I was like, what is this mech? I don't know how big it is. I actually didn't even know it was an Omni mech. I thought it was a second line mech. But fun fact, it's an Omni mech. Uh, it's uh, it's cheap too, guys. Fourteen eighty seven. Uh, that's like as much as the Stalker cost, except for it's forty tons. So <laughs> classic clan mech. Uh, but will it be good? I don't know. It's laden with large pulse lasers. Uh, it's it's fast, you know, and uh, it's got some decent heat sink, so it can definitely hang. What do you think? I don't know. Let's dive in and find out, guys. All the Battleetics excitement coming your way. Stick around. All right, guys, here it is, the Battle Cobra, also known as Cobra Commander. I just can't get it out of my head. I just keep thinking of his, like, crazy helmet. Uh, so the Battle Cobra is definitely a, a pretty goofy-looking mech. Um, it just looks like a walking heat sink to me. Uh, but I am, uh, I think after this analysis, I, I was surprised. I, I took a sneak peek. I, I was very surprised. I think you're going to be surprised, too. 1487 battle value. It's 40 tons. Uh, it was produced in 2873. Fun fact. I thought that this was a mech that was like a late era, like, you know, 3058 style. I think it shows up in one of those TROs, but it was actually around um, substantially uh, before that, uh, and it does persist well into the Dark Age and beyond. Um, it's very fast, 6'9". It's got 20 heat sinks, um, so 10 doubles. Mind blower. No XL engine, guys. I like went through multiple sources here. I was I, I was in Mega Mac. I went to Sarna. I, I was like, it's got to be wrong, but it's not wrong. It's just got a standard fusion engine. Pretty crazy. It does have endo steel. It does have ferrofibrous. It's got 90% uh, armor coverage. 6.5 tons on a 40-ton mech. That's that's pretty meaty. Um, and you can look at the center diagram. It's got upper and lower actuators. It's got really good coverage. Um, and then the weaponry. So it's got two clan large pulse lasers. Now, uh, we looked at large pulse lasers on the Stalker, uh, and I was joking about how much I hate inner sphere large lasers. I hate them. ER large, I'm okay with. Regular large and the inner sphere large pulse are just, ugh, don't love them. Clan, on the other hand, godsend. They're phenomenal. Uh, and this thing's got two of them on a 40 ton mech. They're backed up by two small pulses, which, you know, I don't know. They're there. Um, range is a little bit um, tight on those, as you know. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what kind of damage this thing can do. So jumping down to our um, our, our benchmarks. This is crazy. You're never going to see this. Ever. On any other mech. Uh, so this mech did a baseline damage of 174.3. Incidentally, that's like as much as the Stalker. And it basically costs as much too. So that's that's opening, that's a good sign. Of course, the Stalker has like three times as much armor, but whatever. Uh, here's the crazy thing. Look at the red line damage. Guys, the red line damage does more than the baseline. I've never seen that before. Uh, this thing can build up tons of heat and still do really good damage. And it's not because it's super heat efficient. I mean, you can see late in the game there, uh, you know, around turns, you know, 8, 9, 10, like it starts to build heat pretty aggressively, but it's still outperforming baseline. Why is that? I'll give you a hint. It's pulse lasers, all pulse lasers. Uh, when we get into the optimized damage, we're able to juice this thing up almost by 10%. We get the, uh, the, the optimized damage up to 191.1. .1. Very good. Um, you know, heat relatively stays under control until we get to point blank range. And then I just, you know, opened up with basically everything for two straight turns. Um, and it does, you know, it does really good damage. It has a really, really good damage output. 
Um, in terms of the, the time to kill, the lethality index, guys, really, really good. This thing is on par with the linebacker uh, in terms of time to kill, 7.46. It's at 100% kill ratio, very low engine kills. Look at the head kills, 21.6%. That's mind-boggling. 77.3% uh, on the uh, on the, the, the CT, um, CT head kills. So this thing doing really, really well. Um, it's very lethal. It's very fast. It does really good damage. And it's 40 tons. And it's only 1,400 points, which for a clan mech, that's a, it's a really good. It's really good. Uh, let's take a look at survivability, though. I mean, this thing, again, is 40 tons. Will it hold up in the gauntlet? Um, so we took a look at the armor diagnostic. I mean, the, the spread is very good. Um, the coverage is very good. I mean, the legs are slightly under, but, you know, whatever. Nothing bad. Mobility, uh, it actually took, it took a couple shots here. So 8%. That means, you know, out of all the hits it took, 8% of them were, you know, resulted in motive hits. So over the 10,000 simulations that, that, you know, we run here, Basically, on average, by the end of the game, um, your your target mod drops to 2.1. But you can see it drops off very aggressively at the end there, and it holds pretty flat over the early parts of the game. Um, you know, obviously, it has enough armor to take some damage, but once it gets banged up, I mean, the thing, you know, the thing starts to fall apart pretty quick. What you would expect for a 40-ton mech. Um, the average target mod here is 2.83. Um, so not bad. Now, when we look at survivability, again, you can see that line. It's holding, it's holding, it's holding, and then ah, it just sort of tanks. We're at 62.2%. So is that good? Is that bad? I mean, it's a 40-ton mech. We've seen better, but we've certainly seen um, a lot worse. It's respectable. Um, I mean, obviously, the remember, in this defensive simulation, it's facing down an 80-ton awesome Granted, it's Succession Wars era tech. It's still 30 points of damage coming in roughly every turn, right? The, the awesome is cycling them on and off for heat. But essentially, you're taking, you know, 20 to 30 points every turn, assuming it hits. So it's gone up against a mech twice its weight and slightly more battle value, but not by much, to be quite honest. So, you know, maybe a good test overall. Um, most of the deaths here are CT deaths, and you can see that um, in the red. The majority of, of, of the kills are CT, 36.1%. No ammo deaths, surprising. Uh, and then 1.7% are engine deaths. I love it. So low because it doesn't have an XL engine, right? And I'm curious, you know, if this thing did have an XL engine, would the survivability be substantially worse? Probably. What's interesting about this mech is the, the left and right legs um, have different number of available critical slots. So your left leg has um, two roll agains, the right leg fully packed out. Um, just a fun side note about this mech's critical allocation. Um, but that's about that for defensive. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the efficiency here. How are we doing? Ooh, it looks good. Looks good, I love it. Uh, so the effectiveness here. So you can see this thing really, it's a shame. 12.5% damage loss. It pulls away so hard at the end there, um, and the effective ACD falls actually below the baseline by 4%. So, um, and that's, again, the survival rate 62.2. It's just what you're going to expect for a mech like this. Um, but, again, baseline ACD 174.3. We optimized it up to 191, and then we factor in the survivability. It drops down to 167.3. Still a good number. I mean, you know... <laughs> Remember, the 85-ton stalker we just looked at was in, you know, was in the 160s, 170s. So this is a 40-ton mech uh, that's doing that same type of damage. The efficiency is 8.04. That's so good. Uh, we talked about that again last time with the stalker. I think the one stalker was up in the what was up in the eights, 8 8.6 or so. There is such a small number of mechs that are in that that part of the bell curve, and this battle cobra is one of them. It's like a hidden gem. Again. I had no idea what this mech was. Um, it's one of the reasons I picked it. I was like, this thing is ridiculous looking. I'm sure somebody loves it. Let me run it through Battleetics. I'm impressed. I want one. I want three of them. They're crazy. Um, and you know what's even crazier is the gunnery sensitivity is negative. I've, this is new. This is like, Battleetics engine was like, WTF is happening, Aaron. 
Uh, so we're at minus 0.1 on the gunnery sensitivity. Never seen a negative gunnery sensitivity before, but again, it's all pulse lasers. So actually, this thing is most efficient at gunnery three. So if you look at that curve, it starts at 7.92 at gunnery four. At gunnery three, it goes to 8.07. At gunnery two, where all of these analyses are done, it's 8.04. So actually, this thing's better at gunnery three, which is cheaper, and it's at 8.07. I mean, even if you're running this thing flat at gunnery four, it's a 7.92. That's, that's really good. Um, and if you look at the damage by gunnery, what you can see is, is less than a 20, 20 point bleed off over 12 turns. So between gunnery, gunnery two and gunnery, actually gunnery two to gunnery three, I'm sorry, it's a little over 20, it's 23 points um, over 12 turns. It's like basically two points of damage per turn you're giving up uh, for that, you know, which is, which is not bad at all. So anyway, very interesting um, the way this thing plays out. And again, clam pulse lasers, fantastic. Let's take a look at the threat. So the thing that I love about clam pulse lasers, large pulse specifically, 20 inch range. It's so good. It's just so good. I mean, they're better than just regular flavor inner sphere large. Um, I actually think they're better. Inner sphere ER large, I think is 19 inches, right guys? Um, you might have to, you might have to correct me on that one. I, I don't know if, I, if I'm remembering that correctly. I think they're actually better than the inner sphere um, ER large. 20 inches is far. It's basically LRM range, um, and you're just you're pegging people at that range at minus two points of da or minus two gunnery, um, and and 10 points of damage. Right? Is that is that what they do per piece? Yeah, 10 points each. So good. Um, so where would I play this thing? Let's talk about that. Fire support, I think, is a is a viable choice for a lighter lance. You have this thing just trolling around, and you are hitting so much more than anything else. Your LRM boats and things, they're not going to be able to compete. Think about it. 40-ton mechs, even with a couple of LRM 20s, you're likely not landing 20 points of damage a turn, just the way it is. Um, this thing, you're very likely landing 20 points of damage a turn. Uh, I mean, assuming your gunner is not garbage. But, you know, you got that minus two, it's so big. It basically is like shooting at medium range. So I think this thing could be very potent in a fire support role. Second line roll. Um, have this thing hang in the back and run around with its goofy little body and shoot, 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 shoot. And then you can close in and bring those small pulse lasers into play. Uh, the other role is a skirmisher role. It moves six, it runs nine. You can lure things and bait things out with this and fade, like hit and fade, hit and fade. And you're doing tremendous amounts of damage and you're very likely um, not going to get hit. So because of the lower survivability, I chose roles where it really wasn't in the line of fire. I wouldn't put this in a Vanguard role. I wouldn't like obviously put this in like a cavalry or a brawler type role. Um, even, even in a lighter matchup, there are better mechs to take the bait because this thing can actually deal a lot of damage. And if you keep it in play, it's even more efficient than, than what we saw, right? So in terms of the firing arc, it's got a blind spot in the back, right? I mean, granted, you can torso twist and get your arm and point it in the back arc. I think that's fine. The other weakness is that it, all of its weapons are in the arms, no torso mounted weapons. So you do have to be a little bit careful there. But at the end of the day, um, I think this thing, again, really well positioned for a light mech to defend itself from pretty much any angle of attack. Um, Looking at the threat assessment a little bit more closely. So we talked about dealing damage at 20 inches, certainly can do that. But as you get closer, the one thing I wanna point out is the ACD cap, 97.2%. So your alpha strike is 26 points at six inches. At two inches, your peak alpha strike is 25.3. So when you get to point blank range and you fire everything, you're likely to do 97.2% of your total possible damage on the best dice day possible. That's pretty good. And again, that's courtesy of those, those pulse lasers. Um, just a huge benefit. The most heat it ever builds up in a single trigger pull is five. It's very manageable. Uh, so you can get a point blank range. You can alpha strike. You build up five points of heat. You slow down a little bit, but the next turn you can run around. You can fire one pulse laser, one large, right, or whatever bleed off the heat, no problem. Um, the other thing I'll point out is like, again, you know, your alpha strike, very strong, even at, you know, maximum range, 
20 points all the way into about seven inches. At six inches, those small pulse come into play. But look at the look at the um, the max average calculated damage, right? That's the lighter red between 14 and seven inches. That's a really really good number. Um, so you're basically at 17 points of damage, average calculated damage there, which is still, again, for 20 points, I mean, what is that? Uh, three points, like 85%, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you know, 85% ACD cap between 14 and 7 inches. That's really serious. This thing is dependable. To me, when I'm running up any war game, doesn't have to be Battletech, it could be anything. The thing that I love the best is reliability, dependability, right? Where you can manipulate and control the odds as best as possible. This mech lets you do that. That's an intangible benefit. And I can't underscore how good that is for a mech like this. Um, so my opinion, out of the last three mechs that we've reviewed, this is the one that I think is probably one of the best, um, period. Point-wise, it's fantastic. Efficiency-wise, it's fantastic. Dependability, it's fantastic. Battle Cobras for everybody. Uh, so, fantastic. Uh, if you want to get your own Battle Cobra, guys. Head on over to Ares Games and Minis. Uh, I don't think he has the Wave 2 boxes in stock yet, but I know there is an Ironwind Metals one just waiting for you. Uh, so, Ares Games and Minis has uh, you know the dice, the books, the minis, uh, paints, anything you need. Head on over there. Great prices, fast shipping, uh, and of course, fantastic customer service. That's why I keep recommending Derek. Uh, just just won me over with his customer service since day one, even well before I was doing the channel. Just terrific guy. Um, and also, speaking of the channel, guys, please subscribe. Click the subscribe button. It's all it takes. If you haven't done it, please do it. Uh, we are on our march to 5,000. How many Battletech fans are there? Click the subscribe button. Let us know. Uh, also, guys, leave a like. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think about the Battle Cobra. Um, I haven't even looked at some of the other variants, so I would love to hear what your favorite Battle Cobra variant is, or if this is like everybody knows about this, and I'm the only dolt that that never really looked closely at the Battle Cobra. Um, but I, I mean, this thing—it's so goofy looking. I was like, yeah, I don't even want to look at it. But I'm glad I did. Man, woof! Excited to play it. Uh, and otherwise, guys, if you want to help out the channel more, you can head on over to Patreon. Uh, again, we got a few different tiers to suit your flavor, but if you do want to get involved, there's some higher tiers where there's all sorts of great challenges and campaigns and things you can get involved with. Uh, and if you just want to help out, you can throw us a dollar every month. Everything helps. Helps with the equipment. Helps with, uh, you know, building out the website and the new digital tools and all sorts of fun stuff. So anyway, I'm done marketing, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, really appreciate it. And of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.